That's right. Look at the title. Am I joking? You'll never know. What's up? My name is TSD Tom, and welcome back to part one, Early, Early cinema. cinema. Now, it should be known that I am a fan of Ryan Reynolds. Seriously though, he's the kind of enigma in acting where he pretty much always plays variations of himself, but it never bothers you because he's just so gosh darn charming and funny and handsome. Whenever there's a project where he's involved or he's even at the head of, it activates a primal part of my brain that detects good content. I'm also quite a big fan of movies that revolve around a fake world and an unassuming protagonist. The obvious example is The Matrix, but I prefer to compare it to movies like The Truman Show and that one animated movie that has Mario in it. So when I first heard about Free Guy, you can probably imagine my excitement. The first trailer dropped and the world of TSD Tom was over the moon. I just couldn't wait for this movie, and luckily for me, it was only releasing in a few months in the summer of 2020. Surely nothing could go wrong in that short amount of time, right? Almost two years later, the movie now actually is out, and has been for several months as of recording this. And I was fortunate enough to have it be one of the first movies I saw in theaters. Obviously, I'm fully vaccinated, so I can only recommend you going to see movies if you feel safe and are also vaxxed. But seeing something on the big screen after so long was such an amazing feeling, and it helps that the movie was pretty good as well. But enough jabbering on about sentimentality, broken fantasies, and questioned sexualities. Let's actually talk about the movie. I can only stretch this video on for so long before people start getting suspicious. Free Guy is about a bank teller, fittingly named Guy, who lives in Free City. He lives his life by a pretty average routine, waking up, getting coffee, going to work, getting robbed at gunpoint, and then walking home. But through all this, he always wonders to himself if there's something more to his life. Then, one day he meets a beautiful girl and tries to talk to her, breaking his routine. This decision leads to a cascading series of events that leads him to discover that he and everyone else in Free City are all NPCs, a part of a massive online multiplayer video game, much like Grand Theft Auto in our world, and that the girl he tried to talk to, named Millie, is one of the players. Guy gets caught up in an intense adventure that involves copyright disputes, shady business tactics, and possibly the destruction of Guy's entire world. If that sounds dramatic, then you are in for quite a ride when you actually watch the movie because... Wow. I genuinely do love this movie. While I was excited when the movie was first announced, I will admit I was a bit skeptical. Movies that revolve around modern internet culture are very hit or miss. Emphasis on the miss. The only really good example I can think of is The Mitchells vs. The Machines, which also came out this year. I've talked about it much more in depth in this video. It just started raining. Like... <sighs> Essentially, the way that that boiled down was that it centered its actual plot and themes around wider technological ideas and questions and fears, and only really got specific when it was delving into the comedy. It's a bit harder to take that approach when you're in a movie that's essentially a clone of GTA V. So instead, what Free Guy does is that it explains important plot details to audience members who may not be familiar with gaming culture, and leaves a lot of the jokes for people who are familiar. Though admittedly, those jokes can miss. I don't know who this guy is, but he's outskilling all these players. Shut up when I'm talking to you! You shut your mouth! I really like Jacksepticeye though, so I can't really complain. While the movie will age like fine milk in some places, the core is still very strong. The movie also does something I never would have expected from the trailers. It actually explores the ramifications of its premise. The movie takes time to not only talk about the fact that Guy is essentially the first ever real human mimicking artificial intelligence, when he finally finds out that his world is fake, he spirals as one understandably would if he found out that your world was fake. It's less like The Matrix or that one Mario movie, and more like an episode of The Twilight Zone, if The Twilight Zone starred Ryan Reynolds acting as Ryan Reynolds and was a lighthearted comedy. It's not a perfect metaphor. But my point is, Free Guy rubs elbows with some actually pretty and deeply existential and high concept ideas, while still staying pretty simple and maintaining a lighthearted tone. And that's not the only thing that's unique about it. The themes revolving around the AI awakening of Guy are there, but the movie also acknowledges and incorporates the world of the game and the gaming industry surrounding it, and actually considers the rules of those worlds when running the plot. It's not just some stock hero's journey story that they just slapped video game onto. The crux of the conflict that starts the series of events that takes place in the movie is a copyright dispute between the player Millie and the dickishly flamboyant head developer of Free City, who, as a side note, is performed brilliantly by Taika Waititi. Got it! And keep up. I love this man so much. Anyway, while there are some liberties taken with the general abilities of game developers and some flourishes added, I 
sign in. The movie does at least try to base itself upon the reality it takes place in. And it takes some really incredibly fun routes with it. Dude is a creation of comedic genius, I'm just saying. Catchphrase. It's clear that at least some of the people working on this movie had some intimate knowledge of the gaming sphere, which you can see with some subtle and perhaps not so subtle references. The other key thing that I think makes the movie work really well is that the characters and their dynamics feel fleshed out. Guy has a stereotypically naive personality, but that makes sense when you remember that he was built to be a plain personality in the background of a video game. So really the fact that he grows more of a personality as the movie goes on is impressive in its own right. The other NPCs leave an impression on you as well, even though they have a fraction of the screen time. Officer Johnny! Have a good one, guy. The real world characters also feel great. While some are a bit over the top, they all feel like real people and not archetypes. Which would have been really easy to do. Millie reads well on her quest to find the evidence that her game was stolen, and the way that she interacts with other people shows that she's no pushover. It takes guts to try to sue Blizzard. I mean, Tsunami. So while her character isn't really much to write home about, it's still well done. Keys leads a little into the tortured lover archetype, which seems to be a theme for Joe Keery. But it's very subtle as the plot gets going. And you only really notice his struggle in the ending when it's explicitly pointed out to you. Though you can guess it by paying close attention to his interactions with Millie. Delving into minor spoilers here, I really liked what they did with the romance plots in this movie. It actually is key to the story and the emotional development of these characters. And when it's revealed that Guy was programmed to fall in love with a girl like Millie because of the way he was programmed by Keys, really makes everything go full circle. And it conveniently avoids the question of how a long-term relationship between a human and an AI I would work. Those kinds of relationships historically don't work out. But those are just the above average parts. Based on my description, Free Guy is a good movie, but what makes it a masterpiece? Yes, I'm actually going to seriously defend this title. Fight me. Besides clickbait, I do think that there is a way for me to explain this. Let me tell you a story. In the spring of 2002, the very first Spider-Man movie was released. Wait, wh where's, wait, where, wait. It was, in many ways, a cultural touchstone of the time period. And I will say, it's pretty good, but it's not perfect. In many ways, the movie does not age well at all, both effects-wise and... That's a cute outfit. Did your husband give it to you? Yeah. Still, this movie and its sequels mean quite a lot to a lot of people, as you probably figured out if you ventured into any online discussion that even remotely is connected to Spider-Man. And in many ways, this movie is a lot like Free Guy. It's lighthearted for the most part, it has a lot of watermarks of the time it's from, I assume, and it's a comedy, though sometimes perhaps unintentionally. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. You may be asking, why am I bringing up Spider-Man in a Free Guy video? Well, it's for one particular reason. 2002 was a rough time for the US and the world. The country was still reeling from the attacks from Al Qaeda on the World Trade Center. There was rampant fear and uncertainty, all not helped by the fear mongering against Islamic people in the Middle East in general from those in power, but that's a discussion for another time. Point is, everyone was scared and afraid of each other, and in the middle of all of this, there was this goofy movie about a strong man with spider powers in red and blue spandex. There's a scene towards the end of the movie where the antagonist, the Green Goblin, is attacking Spider Man by a bridge. Then, when it seems the disc Count Green Power Ranger is getting the upper hand, the people on the bridge above start throwing debris at him. Leave Spider-Man alone! You gotta pick on a guy trying to save a bunch of kids? Oh yeah, I got some for your ass! You mess with me, you mess with New York! You mess with one of us, you mess with all of us! It's very cheesy and it's very short, but this clip has always been something that has stuck with me. It seems out of nowhere, but when you consider the cultural context from the time the movie was released in, it makes a lot more sense. It's a call for unity, sure, but it's also an assurance to the people of New York City that they, and by extension the rest of the country, are not alone, and that injustice will be righted by the common people. It's very idealistic, and it's arguably overly optimistic, but it is what a lot of people needed to hear at the time. And it comforted and arguably helped a lot of people who were still reeling from the tragedy of the previous year. Talking about movies is interesting. On one hand, there are a lot of things that can make it objective. You can talk about things like writing ability and technical prowess and acting, all these things that can be pretty easily measured. But a lot of the value from film comes from the fact that it will affect all of us differently. Cultural context is a factor for why movies will have the effect they do, and how those cultural factors don't always align with what the movie is going for. Movies like Joker and Fight Club have pretty strongly progressive and anti-toxic masculinity messaging, yet the communities around these movies 
movies have grown to glorify the very things the movies criticize. Sometimes cultural factors are intentional, like with the scene in Spider-Man, but that's not always the case. My main point in all of this is that I think the reason that I responded to Free Guy so strongly is that it was one of the first movies I saw back in theaters. It wasn't the first, That Honor Belongs to Black Widow, but Black Widow, while good, didn't have the same effect on me. And that was because despite it being from the MCU, it was pretty dark. The opening credits play over a montage of young girls being trafficked and stripped of their humanity to become soldiers for Christ's sake. Not exactly happy fun times. Free Guy was a fun, light, entertaining romp that made me laugh and had me walking out of that theater feeling uplifted. And I distinctly remember thinking after the credits rolled that it finally felt like the world was going back to normal. We still had a long way to go, and we still do have a long way to go, and we probably will have a ways to go for a while. But the feeling of being able to enjoy a fun movie in a theater like that really helped. And for the first time in a long time, I felt genuinely hopeful. So yeah, Free Guy isn't actually a cinematic masterpiece. It's a great film. It's funny, it's sweet, and it managed to actually make me like a Mariah Carey song. <laughs> okay, that was mean. I actually do like her songs. There's just the one. But for me, it's made so much better by the cultural context and circumstances surrounding its release. It means a lot to me. And in my book, if you can elicit that kind of emotional response from anyone, that's as close as to a masterpiece as you can get. I hope you enjoyed this video. Socials are linked down below. Subscribe and like if you feel so inclined. And remember to stay hopeful. It's the most valuable commodity we have, and life feels a lot better with it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Officer Johnny! Have a good one, guy.